In the past few years, Italy has come under the attack of several oil companies from all over the world that want to come and drill the country uh, searching for oil and gas, and in some cases even uh, frack some um, shale gas deposits, for example in uh, Emilia Romagna. Now, the largest player certainly is um, Italy's largest oil company, which is called ENI. Uh, it stands for Ente Nazionale Idrocarburi. They have been traditionally the providers of oil and uh, oil-related products to Italians. Um, they are still 30% publicly owned. They run mostly all of the refineries in Italy, and also they rank about number 10 in the entire world. So they are uh, uh, a big player. Um, however, in these past, I would say, five or ten years, there has been interest in coming to drill uh, in Italy uh, from many other companies, smaller companies from all over the world. Um, now, certainly, uh, together with any, there is also Total, which is um, probably France's largest company. They have been actually in Italy, um, they've been present in Italy for quite some time. Uh, but apart from them, recently, there uh, are American companies, for example, the Forest Oil Corporation of Denver. There is Hunt Oil of Texas, Aliana Resources, which is another uh, Texan company. We have companies from uh, um, Australia, for example, Northern Petroleum. Um, there is another one called uh, Po Valley, uh, Audex Energy. Uh, we have uh, Irish companies, for example, PetroCeltic. We have Canadian companies, for example, Stigam Gas and Viga Oil. So there are quite a few companies that have viewed Italy as a good place for them to come and uh, extract oil. Now, why is it that these companies view Italy as a good place to uh, do business? That in Italy it's very easy to come and drill. And this is because uh, traditionally uh, environmental regulation has been very, very lax. Um, it's easy to get permits. Uh, these permits are scattered uh, you know, in places that would be unimaginable in other parts of the world. Um, the royalty system is very, very generous to these uh, foreign companies. For example, um, if one drills offshore, there is only 4% of the uh, total uh, revenue that the companies make that needs to be returned to the country. And onshore, the oil severance tax, the royalty, is about 10%. And these numbers are viewed very, very um, low, especially if one compares this to other countries um, in, in the world, where instead government uh, keeps a much higher share of, uh, you know, um, of oil uh, income. Um, so all these facts together make Italy a very uh, interesting place, to say the least, for these companies to come and drill. Uh, also, it must be said that it's very easy sometimes, if, you know, for um, backhand deals to be made, uh, for uh, uh, not very transparent, let's say, procedures to be to you know be in existence between oil companies and probably uh, people who are in power. And all this has been, you know, the traditional background. But in these past few years, there has been uh, a sort of a renaissance, I would say, in people's uh, desire to, to stop all this and you know, people feeling empowered that they can do something against these oil companies. In fact, the entire country at this moment is um, sort of uh, has their own you know, local fights against oil companies. And in some cases, they are even turning out to be uh, successful um, campaigns against oil companies. And um, in my personal experience, one of the, the biggest, let's call them fights, that the people set up against um, an oil company was uh, from the town of Ortona in Abruzzo, which is in central Italy and which is actually a, a beautiful um, winemaking uh, district. And the plan was here for Eni, Italy's largest oil company, to come and uh, basically uproot all these uh, vineyards and just to uh, have an oil field and build an oil processing center. Um, the population um, was highly active in wanting to stop this. There were protests, there were marches, uh, there was uh, political pressure put on uh, you know, whoever was in command. There were uh, rallies. Even the Catholic Church took a position against the building of this uh, oil refinery. And this was about four years ago, and you know, it lasted from 2007, I would say, until the first half of 2009, all this protesting. And eventually the oil company had to withdraw, and their plan is currently on indefinite hold. 
And this was a wonderful victory because, again, it came, at least at the beginning, very lukewarm support from the politicians. It was really a grassroots movement with people from all over the world trying to do whatever they could uh, to, to save this um, area. But then these sentiments and this feeling sort of spread to other parts, both of Abruzzo, which is the original era that we're talking about, and to the rest of the country. And um, at present, um, there are plans to uh, drill, uh, for example, in Abruzzo, there are plans to drill 50% of the land, which means that there is a lot of work to still be done. Boma is a little town that lies at the feet of a lake, and uh, the area is very well known for its fragility. Um, the lake also has a dam nearby, and which was built like in 1950 or so, and the, land, the terrain was so fragile that, that the dam cannot be built in cement. It had to be built um, with a special a slope, and then, you know, the terrain had to be assembled in a certain way so as you know just to uh, avoid uh, some ruptures and uh, leakages from the from the area so so, so the, the area is prone to subsidence it's prone to uh, problems happening uh, geologically and the presence of um, a, a refinery and also the presence of oil extraction and gas extraction wells certainly do not uh, you know would not be compatible with this kind of terrain that the area has and that is why a project that forest oil this is a an American company, Forest Oil Corporation, uh, their, uh, their, their project is highly controversial. And this is not something that people that are against the, um, the refinery are saying. It is something, in fact, that the Forest Oil Corporation acknowledged itself. They put out a statement back in 2008 where uh, one senior official from the Forest Oil Corporation said clearly that the area had been... Um, investigated by Amy, which is another Italian oil company, in the 1960s, you know, it had been surveyed to uh, determine whether oil operations could be feasible there, and they decided that no oil operations could be compatible with what already was on the ground, expressly because of these problems of uh, the fragility of the dam, the fragility of the terrain. And so Amy decided back then not to go ahead with its plans to drill and to uh, install a refinery in that area. And now here we are, 30 or 40 years later, where the Forest Law Corporation all of a sudden says that its systems, its technology will be so wonderful that nothing will happen. And we just you don't believe that. It, it is not, we don't agree with what they say. So that's one problem that the, the refinery has in this area. And another problem is that the refinery would be built very, very close to town. So even if the terrain was not as fragile as it is, what would happen is that, and, you know, and there have been simulations about this, uh, that the exhaust, the fumes coming from the refinery would hit directly the center of town. And this is unacceptable. This is a touristic town. This is a place where people go to be in the mountains, to be by the lake, to breathe fresh air. This is not a place where people want to be, you know, surrounded by uh, toxic fumes coming from, from a refinery. It would kill the entire way of living of this town. So this is a project that does not sit well at all with what Bomba is at the time. <laughs> Esattamente circa sei volte e mezzo, sette volte l'ingombro della nostra, del nostro impianto. Per cui non mi sembra che ci sia dal punto di vista dell'impatto ambientale rispetto ad altri insegnamenti e ci sia una differenza notevole. Possiamo assicurarvi che le emissioni dell'atmosfera sono vita di tutto il mondo di legge. Rammentando di che i limiti della regione sono 30% più restrittivi di quelli nazionali e della Unione Europea. Professor Chemelkowski, a famous professor at the University of Turin, retired, famous engineer who helped stabilize the Tower of Pisa. The diagram shows the location of monitoring points 
on the dam and in the valley. We want to keep the tide and strong to gas patrol. It's a good job. It's a good job. It's important to realize that we have worked on the lake with the tide and 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 the tide. Our experts have predicted that the subsidence of all the dam would never exceed seven centimeters. Maria Rita dice che in Texas non c'è più turismo, ci sarà un motivo. Quindi, ripete ancora che questa è la soluzione migliore.
del, del probabile crollo della diga in una delle nostre assemblee, quindi è la foresta stessa che parla di questa eventualità e di questo grosso problema. Quindi secondo me i sensori non garantiscono la sicurezza dei cittadini a valle per un problema che la forest stessa riconosce. Brava. Ok, what I can tell you about Ron Brown are two things. Ron Brown was a consultant geologist for our company, not a manager, not a director. He was just a consultant. Ron Brown attended a small convention or a small group in Denver and made a PowerPoint presentation. Ron Brown makes the point that the people of Italy were worried about the jaunt. Yeah? Ron Brown did not make a direct comparison between the Valsangro and the Bajon situation. In fact, Ron Brown does not have the experience or background to comment on the similarity between Bajon and Valsangro. E tant'è vero che lo stesso Ron Brown non aveva la la le competenze e la preparazione per poter fare per poter fare un raffronto di questo genere. È stato un raffronto perché dicevo la verità delle, delle due situazioni. programmato abbiamo una, di turismo naturalistico legato alla cultura, all'enogastronomia, alla valorizzazione ambientale. Di che cosa andremo a parlare? E dopo questi 14 anni forse voi ripristinate quello che ci avete tolto, ma che ricominciamo da capo? La cittadini di Pomba hanno ristrutturato le case, hanno ehm, creato dei, delle case vacanze, delle, dei bed and breakfast. Proprio perché il, il paese, la natura lo permette, affacciarsi a godere di questo paesaggio, è meraviglioso, un domani affacciarsi, di cosa dobbiamo godere? Quindi c'è un forte contrasto, una forte contraddizione e giustamente quale slogan potremmo utilizzare per promuovere questo nostro di ecosostenibilità ambientale e di un'economia sostenibile? See, Abruzzo is a region that uh, is doing very well in terms of its agricultural industry. Uh, they're doing very well with their wine exports. And basically, the economy right now is based on agriculture, on light industry. Uh, there is a, a renaissance of tourism because, um, in particular, in the southern part of Abruzzo, there used to be a rail line that used to run all along down the southern coast. And that created a buffer zone over the years, meaning that from this uh, rail line all the way to the sea, nothing was ever built. And right now the rail line has been removed and the idea was to turn this place into a park and to foster the growth of a um, quality type tourism. We don't want big resorts, we want to keep it semi-wild the way it is right now. And this to appeal to a certain type of clientele, to a certain type of tourists that are looking more for naturalistic experiences. It was promised to us by the politicians when they got elected. And turning the place into an oil field is something that goes totally against what we are right now and what we want to be. There were plans and there are still plans to uproot wineries to put oil fields with heavy, sour oil. This is the, the worst kind of oil that you can possibly think of. Mm -hmm.